Welcome to Gapology Radio with your hosts, Mark Tinas and Brian Brockoff, authors of the leadership development books, Gapology, Imbar, and Speed of Purpose. At Gapology, our purpose is to help leaders achieve their greatest potential. To learn more about our groundbreaking books and training services, visit our website, gapology.org. Hey everybody, welcome to Gapology Radio. If you're looking for an easy way to build some quick-hitting leadership into your team's development, take a look at our Gapology Inspirations book series. These are broken into two volumes currently, with a third actually on the way, and they're written blog style with short messages to quickly absorb and share with your team to give them a topic to reflect on each week of the year. You can find a link on our website, gapology.org, or just do a search on amazon.com for Gapology Inspirations. And as for tonight, we'll be continuing our conversation on Minding the Gap. This time we'll be exploring a mindset difference where some team members feel a sense of personal accountability, while others are somewhat apathetic with their roles and expectations. So let's go ahead and get the show rolling with Mark Tinas. Hey, Mark, how are you doing? I'm oh, good, Brian. How are you? I'm good. What a crazy last four days here uh, at the Brockoff family uh, area here in Kansas City. What happened? <laughs> so, you know, I went from being a non-grandfather to being the grandfather of two babies in the last four days. What? Yep. Yeah. So my oldest awesome. son had a little girl on Friday, uh, six pounds, three ounces, Ava. Beautiful. Congrats. Yep. Thank you. And then uh, just yesterday morning, uh, my youngest son and his wife uh, had a little boy. Moses is his name. Wow. Yeah. And he is now get this. So you think six pounds, three ounces is small. And we were like, oh my gosh, as soon as we held her, we were just shocked how small she was. But uh, Moses was only five pounds, three ounces. So even smaller yet. Yeah, but he'll like rule the world, you know. I've I've read that book. I forget oh, about the Bible. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, he'll be parting the Red Sea and all that. He'll be important. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and he, yeah, no, he he will be uh absolutely uh, you know, badass when he gets older. That's for sure. Yeah, so, they, they deliver with... babies whenever nowadays, so it's they deliver them early, too. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um yeah, they were both early. Moses was a month early. And, oh my God. Yeah. And Ava yeah, that's, was th- three yeah. weeks early. So yeah. 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 But, that's uh well, but, congratulations. That's, that's yeah. fantastic. Oh. But you'll, you'll never catch up with me. So just, you know, no, give it know. up. How, how many are you up to now? Well, I only have five, but I've got one coming in mm-hmm. July, in August. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. In August. Yeah. My boys need to get, get it going. We got to get caught up. <laughs> yeah. Get that pep talk going. Right. right. Close, close those gaps. <laughs> You got the same number of kids as I do. Yeah, yeah. They're just a little behind here. <laughs> when when I was your age, I didn't have any. So you're way ahead of me. So I'm just Uh-oh. joking. Yeah, yeah. We'll we'll catch up. We'll catch up. No, but it's been exciting. Uh definitely kind of craziness around here, but uh everybody's healthy and doing good. So but I'm fired up for tonight's podcast. I think we have a good topic this week. We're gonna talk about accountability and apathy. Um, looking at minding the gap. So we started out, uh, I don't know, several weeks ago talking about this topic, minding the gap. Um, And I thought it'd be interesting to look at the contrast between people who feel accountable and people who feel more apathetic. So so I know you have some notes on it, Mark. So do you want to kick her off? Yeah. So uh, thank you. So in our experience, Brian and I have found that many leaders and we certainly would have been in that group at some point. Um, and many organizations don't see the gaps that they have. Mm-hmm. So when you think of mind the gap, in M I N D, mind the gap. It's it's really about be be aware that there's there's a gap there. Look, look for the gaps, see them. Uh, so mind the gap is really about emphasizing, exemplifying. You know that it came from the London subway system where if you, you know, stepped in the gap, you'd break your leg getting off the train. There's a gap between the train and the ramp. But there are gaps likely in your organization, in your business, that you are um, either not seeing or not admitting. 
and both can be true. And if you simply mind the gap and are curious about it and uh, are willing to go after it, you can close those gaps. So it is a significant concept when we talk about mind the gap. In the uh, forward for Gapology, it was it was the topic of of the forward written for the book by Judy Shulak. But it is of great significance to you today. So you need to mind the gap. They're they're there. The gaps are there. And uh, when you when you become aware of them uh, and are again focused on closing them and very curious about them and the behaviors that equal them, you can change everything. One of our one of our most recent clients would have found that on a key metric, the organization was at 90% of the goal. Okay. So the gap is between 90% and a hundred. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's a gap. So they would need to determine the behavioral difference between what they're expecting and, and what, you know, they're achieving. What they may not have thought about is that the best performing group was at 120%. So the organization at 90 best performing at 120%. That is also a gap. It's a great thing to have. It's a gap between, you know, what you expect and what you're achieving. And the, the key is there's a behavioral difference there. So again, you observe the behavior of the 120, you observe the behavior of the 90, and you really understand how to always achieve the 100. So mind the gap is of great significance to every organization. And again, many are just looking the other way. It's a lot easier often to ignore the gap, and it can be there. The other thing we've seen is sometimes when an organization is achieving the goal, so they've set a goal of 100, and they're achieving 100, what they're not looking at is there are parts of the organization that are only at 80, and there's parts of the organization that are at 120. So there are significant gaps in the organization yet they're just totally celebrating that overall they're making it. And again, the behavioral differences between the two can be closed. So the call out here is for the leaders to mind the gap, be aware of it, care about it, find it, go after it. It's behavioral and, and go ahead and close it. What, what do you think about that, Brian? Yeah, no, I love it, Mark. Um, that was so well said. I think that's um, a key thing that people really need to listen to. And, you know, if you need to pause the podcast, go back and re-listen to that opening. I think that is critical. And what you said there about, you know, that some leaders are just not seeing or not admitting to the gaps, I think that's critical as well. So if you think about not admitting to them, you know, that's where you kind of put those blinders on, you ignore them, um, you know, you just don't don't believe it's happening or or you just kind of are kidding yourself that it's good enough. It really comes down to building a culture where you're looking for the gap, you're accepting the gap, and I would almost say, you know, be excited when you find a gap because that gives you the information then to go and close it. If you ignore it or don't admit that you have them, you'll never close them and you'll never grow and move forward. Well, and many of our leaders run multiple teams and just because you're making the number overall. That does not mean you're making it everywhere. And that is a gap that you have to be willing to admit and deal with. And tonight's topic is really about accountability. You know, are you creating accountability for the underperformance on your own team, even though you're making the number? You're making the number because there's people on the team blowing it away. You know what I'm saying, Brian? Yeah, the yeah, range for sure. in performance is significant. And are you creating accountability? Yeah, no, that is critical. If you think about just the culture that you're creating, and, and we always are creating culture regardless, you know, good or bad or or whatever. If you ignore the gaps, you're creating a culture of really apathy. You're just accepting the fact that, you know, I'm going to have these underperformers. I'm going to have these gaps. And, you know, I just, I'm going to have them, you know, versus going after them being on the lookout for them, 
feeling personally accountable as the leader to any gap and the closure of them. And it's often common that the leaders are not understanding and sharing what the team at 120% of expectation is doing. Because if we simply shared that with the 80% team and taught them that, they could, you know, achieve the expectation. And we have to, we have to create accountability by doing that. And uh, it's, it's a great thing for the team overall. So the gap on the upside, the gap on the, on the downside, significant to mind, M-I-N-D, and uh, understand and uh, figure out how to, how to close it. Yeah, absolutely. And, and that is important. Um, oftentimes we do ignore the caps, especially on the, on the upside stuff. So the stuff that we're exceeding the expectations, you know, our team members are exceeding and we don't look at what are they doing and how can I learn from that? And how can I take, take those um, behaviors to the rest of the team? Yeah, no, that's, that's, that's mm -hmm. key. It, it's often so, so simple. Brian and I were in retail for a number of years. So we had a we had a team that was selling more per customer than anyone else. And that changes the numbers dramatically. So we're all selling the same product at the same price, but one group selling a lot more product per customer. And we went and visited and found that they were offering every customer a cart. Yeah. A shopping yeah. cart. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Huh. This is great. Yeah. And we started measuring the difference between someone shopping the store and checking out without a cart and someone shopping the store and checking out with a cart. And holy crap, mm -hmm. I think it was $17 difference. And uh, wow. So they had a whole plan on how to position the carts for the customer, how to offer them to the customer, uh, how to retrieve them from the parking lot instantly when they went out the door or to keep them from going out the door at all. And they viewed carts as the most valuable thing they had other than their, than their team. So we said, okay, this is good. We can do this everywhere though. And we started doing it everywhere. And of course we sold more product per customer than anyone else. And we shared the tactic with with others and it became significant mm -hmm. um at one point the calculation brian i think was that it covered the the increase in the purchase per customer covered all of the hourly payroll in the store mm -hmm. so payroll became free because someone developed a cart plan and again it, you know it may have sounded silly it was fantastic yeah. No, I, and, I I remember it so clearly that at first I, I thought it was silly, honestly. I was like, okay, so well, so did I. When so I first it, heard about it. it yeah, yeah, it seems silly. too simple. But it was made a massive impact when you intentionally thought about how you're gonna put a shopping cart in the hands of every customer to make it easier for them to shop. They don't have to carry stuff around, they can easily set one more thing in the basket. Um, and it makes sense. And I don't know why people didn't think of it before, but it was, it was just revolutionary <laughs> and it was so simple. And for some people pushing a cart around the store is easier than walking without a cart. Yeah. It's sort of a supportive walking thing. And it also makes it much easier to purchase more stuff. I can't carry the three boxes of file folders to the counter, but oh, wait, if I have a cart, mm -hmm. I can easily fill it up. It changes the whole shopping dynamic. And uh, wow, you know, what a difference. Right. You know, do grocery store chains today know the difference between what the cart customer spends, what the hand basket customer spends, and what the non-hand mm -hmm. basket or cart customer spends? And, you know, it was, it was amazing to us. So we, we in some stores... At peak time, we would have someone standing at the entrance and pushing a cart, you know, right in front of the customer and, you know, offering it to them. And th they felt so good about it. The, 
it, it felt like great customer service and it led to much higher, yeah, you know, yeah. revenue per customer and mm-hmm. right. boom. So sometimes, and again, Brian, you and I've talked about this many times, the gap is often missed on the upside. So often leaders are only focused on gaps to the negative. They don't look at why is so-and-so just blowing us away here? What is going on? Why are their numbers so much better? You've got to understand it. You've got to go see it. You've got to, you've got to ask questions. You've got to be curious. And uh, often you can find an answer that everyone can execute. Right. It's about minding the gap. Minding yeah. the gap's big. Yeah. And when you think about the whole accountable, so if you have, if you're a leader and you are really self-accountable, you, you really care about the numbers, the gaps on the upside and the downside, and you're really analyzing and looking at your business, you want to know why you're winning because you want to try to replicate that in the other areas. Those leaders that are apathetic, that really don't feel that self-accountability, um, they don't do that kind of stuff. You know, they just let the world happen to them versus getting out there and making a difference. Yeah. Sometimes we're doing okay is okay. Right. And yeah, we're middle uh, of the pack. We're, you know, we're not at the bottom, you know, that type of thing. Yeah. We're, we're not on the radar. Right. Yeah. I've heard that over over the years. Hey, at least I'm not on the radar. I'm not on the radar. Oh man. Yeah. Versus I'm the talk of the company, talk of the industry, you know? So anyhow, Gaps are the key, folks. Mm-hmm. And minding the gap is your job. Find them and close them. And again, they're both positive and negative. Yeah. As the leader, be the example for the rest of your leadership team. If you have other leaders in your team and you see that they're feeling, you know, kind of apathetic, they just kind of let things happen, be the example. Take them under your wing, show them how to look at the gaps on both ends, the, the positive and the negative, how to dive in and analyze and find out why the gaps are the way they are. What are the behaviors driving those gaps? Show them how to do it, lead the way and and they'll follow. Yeah. And, and sometimes it's, you know, it's just crazy. We were in retail and again, we, at one time we started measuring cartons per man hour. Hmm. So cartons that came off the truck processed to the shelf per man hour. Okay. No big deal. Probably not much of a variance. We found that the difference was between location was 52 cartons per man hour down to 10 cartons per man hour. And wow, what a difference. And what a difference in payroll, what a difference in productivity, in profit, et cetera. And so we went and observed 52. We went and observed 10 and we found the gap and we understood it. And because we connected with that, we were able to change everything rather dramatically and fill the shelves. Yeah, it it is rather dramatic. And, and, you know, we've told the story, you know, many times on here about, you know, where this all came from and Mark, you know, some of your early studies on this stuff. And that's what it's all about is just looking at the gaps that are out there. You know, what are the top performers doing that the bottom performers are not? looking at the behaviors and analyzing that stuff. And once you do that, it all becomes clear. I mean, if we went to a retail location today, we could find a significant number of gaps because we're, we've been in retail most of our lives and we could certainly figure out how to close them, Mm -hmm. but there would be gaps. There would be gaps in the top performing stores. And again, they could be on the upside or the downside. There would be gaps in the bottom performing stores, probably more could be to the downside only, but, Either way, they can be closed. Whatever your top performing teams are producing should likely be your expectation. Mm -hmm. So start thinking about that. So whatever they're producing, whatever that number is, if it's 120% of expectation, likely that should be the expectation. And you already have in front of you the behaviors that could get you there. Go, Go after it. Go after it. Help the team understand it. Give them that information. I mean, when Brian and I talked about, you know, oh, just give the customer a cart. Hello? (laughs) How complicated is that? Yeah. You know? Right. I know. It's crazy. Wait a minute. Crazy about carts. 
<laughs> carts produce seventeen dollars more per customer yeah. than non carts. <laughs> yeah, even if they're offered to the customer. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's complicated. Don't know if I can do it. We had so much fun with that. Yeah, we, yeah, uh, we did. Yeah, we called it crazy about carts. I remember crazy about carts, and yeah. <laughs> uh, we drove the company crazy because nobody could touch us. Yeah. Even though they, even though we gave them the plan, they probably didn't believe it initially. So, yep. and you know, there's some of our colleagues out there that are listening to this that were that were around at the time, and they're laughing right along with us because it did feel maybe a little silly at first, but it made all the difference in the world. Often, you know, we just complicate things. Yeah, yeah. Our businesses are really simple. The answers are often right in front of us. Because again, the top performers have sort of figured it out. Let's go spend time with them. Oh, that's that's another thing that's key here, is we found that leaders spend the majority of their time with underperformers. Oh, right. Yep. Huh. I wonder what's wrong with that plan. What if they spend as much time with top performers, so that they fully understood what's going on? Mm -hmm. Could the underperformers benefit significantly from that? And does everything in the organization change? So if you're a leader and you're spending your time with, you know, those people that uh, aren't performing, you know, certainly you need to do that. But is that balanced with top performers? And are you assuming that you even know what the top performers are doing? Let's go see. Yeah. You know, let's, uh, let's, uh, oh, yeah. let's observe. No. Yeah, no, we see that all the time. The high up leadership is giving direction. You know, I only want you to spend your time focusing on your bottom performers. And it is just very one sided of a viewpoint. It's short sighted to not look to see what the top people are doing so that you can learn from them, close your knowledge gap around the things that are working, and then go visit the other people to to share. Yeah. go Well, go spend a week with your top performers. Mm-hmm. And then go visit the other performers. Yeah. And then maybe you'll see that gap and you can help them close it. We have found sometimes, Brian and I have found this, in the underperforming group are the top performers. And all they needed was the tactics that, you know, we needed to give them, the behaviors they needed to see that they didn't, that they didn't know. And suddenly they were performing, you know, at the top. So that may be the better focus understand top performance, then go help underperformers. Yep. Absolutely. All right. So Mark, do you have any uh, tips that leaders can do? Well, if you look at the knowledge gap and you're trying to create accountability, the first thing is clear expectations. And again, that's a main topic of gapology. The team has to be clear on the expectations. So have you are you sure that they're clear we we created the index card exercise which was has been incredible for us uh, i did it again the other day it was it's great so you hand an index card to everyone on the team and say okay write down the top three or five whatever the number keep it narrow expectations that your leader has for you and hand it back to me and you compare that with what the leader just wrote on that index card for you. And uh, it's quite, quite interesting. So if they match, that's awesome. Uh, clear expectations are key. So back in the, in the research for Gapology, we found the gap to be 87% uh, uh, match rate was the A group. So the expectations matched. The team knew the expectations at a rate of 87%. And uh, those were the top performers, the A group. And the C group, the bottom performers, matched at 14%. So we knew immediately when we were researching for Gapology that the key to closing the gaps was clear expectations. We really never found anything that was as significant, did we? Did no. we, Brian? No, by far, yeah. that's the most. Mm -hmm. Clear expectations are key. So if if the team doesn't know the expectations, there aren't any expectations. 
Mm -hmm. and there is no accountability. So you own that leader and you, you've got to, you've got to nail that one. So everyone's got to be clear and um, you'll, we've never seen a high performing team that didn't have clear expectations. So clear expectations really become the key to closing the, uh, the knowledge gap. There's nothing that comes close and really spend, spend your time there and then don't assume anything because the new quarter came around and a few things changed. You need to come back and make sure that everyone's clear on the expectations. The other gap here is that sometimes the expectations vary by role. So make sure that it's clear by role. So what's expected of this person in this role may not be the expectation of the person at a different role. So just, just work on sh ensuring that you have significant alignment there and very clear expectations. And as it relates to creating accountability and minding the gap around accountability, this is like number one. Yeah. And I would also say, if you are unclear about the expectations being set for you as a leader, get clear on that. Close your own gap there. You know, reach out to your boss, ask the question, you know, gain your own clarity so that you are aligned with them. And then from there, you can help to align the rest of the team. The other thing that I've done there, and I've experienced that a number of times, is to go ahead and set my own expectations and set them much higher than the boss would have thought of. Yeah, yeah. And in doing so, you can often lead the organization higher. Mm -hmm. Don't wait. Don't wait for the boss and don't, you know, necessarily buy into their expectations if you think you can achieve something different. So go, go for it because it can lead the boss to new levels and that helps. Right. So the, the knowledge gap around, around accountability versus apathy is clear expectations. If the team is not clear on expectations, apathy can set in because there are no expectations. Fair enough? Yep. Yeah, definitely. On the importance gap, if you tie the expectations to your purpose and you explain that to the team so that they understand for their role, how the expectations tie to the purpose, that is huge. I mean, it creates engagement. It creates an emotional connection. It really closes the importance gap because it explains why achieving this level matters. And so you need to be very good at taking the purpose of your team, your organization, and explaining why the expectations tie to the purpose. How's that sound? Yeah, you know, that's a really important part, Mark, um, because what you don't want to do is get into a loop of having to motivate your team over and over again. You know, uh, I, I think often leaders just always want to think, hey, how can, how can we motivate people, get them going? But when you tie the expectations to the purpose, people become emotionally connected to it on their own. It's it's more of a deep understanding around why it's important. So, um, you know, really look at that piece. I think that's a critical step that should be built right into the core foundation of your organization. Yeah. For, for the individual, it makes it real. Yeah. So you've tied their role to the purpose and to some metrics that measure it. And it just makes it real. It engages them again. It, it you know, it excites them. It, it can really be a difference maker. So think about if you've done this and um, if, if not, you may have importance gap issues that you need to close and they are of great significance. So again, if the team, you go back to the knowledge gap, the team knows the metrics you expect, but they aren't really engaged in those things. They don't really know how their behavior, how their role ties to it. You have an importance gap. So you have to close this one as well in order to create great performance. Mm -hmm. Yep. The last one I had then was just the action gap. So the leader's key here 
And the leader's rhythm is really key here. So think about your rhythm as a leader as it relates to the expectations. What's the rhythm of the week, the month, the quarter? Uh, Do you publish the results that you expect? Do you rank them? Do you observe the behavior like we talked about earlier of the top performance? And do you share then with the entire group what the behavior looks like when you're blowing away the expectation? That is huge. So your behavior as a leader really closes the action gap. And then the other big piece is creating accountability. Top performers do not like to work with underperformers. Is that true, Brian? Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, definitely. You see that all the time. And when you allow those underperformers to linger on your team, it can really damage the culture. Well, and top performers don't want to be there. Right. So you have to create accountability around performance. So if underperformers are allowed to stay on the team, uh, you've damaged the team. You've damaged top performers. They They don't appreciate that. So they like to work with people that care as much as they do. They give as much as they do. So you have to create accountability around around the results. So publishing them is one thing. Ranking them is another. Creating accountability around people that do not perform to this level aren't on the team. is That's your job. Mm -hmm. You may be the gap in accountability if you do not create you know, accountability around results. So it's, it's, uh, it's a big deal. So often the gap is the leader. Uh, We've said that many times. So we've been the gap many times. We understand that. Uh, So think about that. That's the essence of accountability versus apathy is that on our team, uh, everyone performs and uh, we live our purpose and we achieve these expectations. That's that's huge. Yep. When that comes from you and it's real and it's, you know, acted upon, everything changes. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And one last thing, just when you when you're thinking about accountability, there's the other piece that ties to that and that's recognition. So, especially those top performers, they need that recognition. So, you know, ensure that in your leadership rhythm that you've built in methods to regularly coach those underperformers, but also recognize, publicly recognize, um, and then also privately, I guess, uh, those top performers, those ones that are exceeding your expectations. Yeah, I miss that. So even back in the importance gap, what you celebrate, the expectations and the achievement of that uh, helps close the importance gap. So it's a huge importance gap piece and then an action gap piece. So yep, well yep. said. Yeah, Well said. Perfect. Okay. All right. We gave them plenty to work on. Yeah, that, that's a good one. This is a good one this week. Uh, there are a lot of pieces here to take away. Go back and re-listen to it if you need to. Um, there's a lot of stuff here. I'll try to get a blog put together this week too. Um, it's kind of difficult to find time now with all these grandbabies uh, rolling around here, <laughs> but uh, I'll try to get something put out so everybody can uh, you know, have some stuff that's written down that you can take from as well. Much appreciated. uh, Yep, but thank you, Mark. I appreciate everything from you. All right, thanks, everybody. Mind the gap. Mind the gap. Talk to you later. All right, that'll do it from here. For more information on Gapology or Gapology Inspirations, head on over to our website, gapology.org. Everyone have a fantastic week. We'll talk to you soon. This has been a Gapology Institute production. Visit us at gapology.org.